Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games. Welcome to another Atlas video. Today I'm going to be giving you everything, everything you need to know about Atlas ahead of its launch so that you guys have got all the information ahead of its launch on the 13th of December. However you feel about Atlas, whether or not Wildcard, Grapeshot Studios, the new name of the studio taking control of this, is in the right for making this game, it certainly has attracted a lot of attention. So I'm going to be doing what I always do. I'm going to try the game out. I'm going to give you my honest opinion and let you guys know whether or not it's going to be worth playing, investing your time in. So come with me as I give you everything you need to know about Atlas. Now, Wildcard are the absolute masters of hype, and they're no different. They've already got a brand new website and domain name set up, playatlas.com. They have a current timer, giving us the breakdown until when Atlas will go live in six days' time. It's only going to be available on Steam initially, but it will be coming to Xbox One Game Preview Program early 2019. As usual, PlayStation fans, you're probably going to have to wait until the game is much closer to full release to experience it unless Sony change and have a games preview program. The developers are called Grape Shot Studios. They are a sister company of Wildcard. Don't let that fool you though. This is half the team that made Ark or maybe even more. With both the lead creator and creative directors from Ark working on Atlas, not to mention a bunch of staff from Ark and Wildcard. That's why they employed a bunch of new people for Ark this year. It's also why Extinction came out late and was riddled with bugs and issues. It's going to be $30 in early access and the plan is to have it in early access for two years. Once it comes out of early access, it will be then $60. The developers have recently said in a bunch of interviews that they will not be adding any paid DLC or expansions. Unlike Ark with its season pass and free DLC maps, that won't be a thing for Atlas. Instead, Atlas is going to have microtransactions that you can earn in-game by grinding for currency, or you can go ahead and spend real money on microtransactions that will customise the look of your ship and your characters. Atlas is an MMO, it's going to have 40,000 plus players, some reports are stating that it's 50,000 players. The developers are going to do exactly what they did with Ark Survival Evolved and open it up to the modding community. You will be able to create mods for the game as it develops in early access and you'll be able to rent your own server. Now let's talk about the servers and how Atlas is so different and ambitious. If you've never played a massively multiplayer game before, look up EVE Online for some sort of indication of how this game's going to play. It's true, you really can maybe play on one single server. That's the plan, there will be a server for each region in the real world. In fact, there's going to be two servers, PvP and PvE. So whether you're playing in America, if you're playing in the Oceanic regions, you will have your own server to run around on. But how can they do this? How can they implement 40,000 players on a server when they can barely get 70 on an ARC server? It's all about the architecture they're using and cloud data saving. Realistically, the world will be split into different zones. In fact, there's going to be 10 distinct zones or biomes. Think of it like this. Imagine 1,200 ARC survival role servers stitched together across them 10 biomes. Each one of these servers or grids is going to house lots and lots of islands and locations for you to go and explore. Each grid will have its own biome, it'll have its own creatures, as well as plant life and construction materials. Or When you go from one grid to another, you could technically say it's swapping servers. But there won't be no loading screen, you'll simply be sailing away on your boat until the next area. So what happens if everyone goes to one grid? Well, the developers have got a system that will actually throttle people from joining. So it may come a situation that you may not be able to enter a certain district or certain grid on one of these biomes because there are too many players already battling it out. They'll ask you to move around or you'll only be able to go in the waters around it until some space is cleared. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to be locked out of visiting particular biomes. Remember, these 10 different biomes or different world areas are going to have lots and lots and lots of space, lots and lots of grids that will all have the same sort of biome status in it. It sounds a little bit mad and that's because it is. There are lots of instances in the gaming world that currently do similar systems to some degree of success. Most of them, however, fail quite miserably. EVE Online is probably the closest to it. Each time you cross a district or a vector in the game world, you'll come across a loading screen that takes you to that new place. So while technically they can say it's all on one server, it really isn't. 
That's not exactly what's gonna be happening with Atlas though. Atlas is promising there won't be any load screens. So there could be a situation where people really have to think politically and strategically, particularly in PVP, how they're gonna take on another faction. You might not be able to put all your boats in one area and just strong arm anyone there. You're gonna to have to spawn out and strategically attack points on the maps in the other faction's control. This is the crucial difference between what this game is as an MMO and what you're usually come to expect from playing Ark. This is not just a survival game, this is not just an adventure open world game, it is an MMO. It's going to have all the deep features you would come to expect. Obviously I'm going to be giving you guys more information about how you can rent your own servers and what the situation is with going from one biome to the next or one grid to the next. But for now that's what we know about the servers. What do we know about the actual main point of the game? Well of course it is all about being a pirate life but there is fantastical creatures in the game and there is a form of a quest line. Don't be expecting lots of story content No, they really are giving us a playground to play in. There will be some loose items or quest lines that you have to follow to maybe summon bosses just like it is in Ark Survival Evolved. There will be some artifacts that you have to collect if you want to take on the huge massive Kraken godlike bosses. Alongside the challenge of facing off against the gods you will be going around sunken wrecks, recovering salvage and following procedurally generated treasure maps. These will be found in bottles that you will pick up and they will lead you some treasure nearby. You'll also be able to explore tombs and there is going to be even more in terms of places to explore. Supposedly there is 45,000 kilometers of explorable space. On each server there is going to be at least 700 island locations. You are not going to be able to sail around the seas in the case of just an hour. It's going to take a phenomenal amount of time to get from one side of the map to the other. To help you with that you're going to obviously need your boats and the boat building is real core aspect of the game. You'll first get yourself a dry dock as you can see from the old leaked trailer that came out four months ago and depending on what website you visit there are signs that they've got six or five ships at launch. Remember it's early access they may be adding more. You've got the dinghy rowboat, the basic raft, sloop, schooner, brigantine and galleon. All of these ships will be customizable and you'll be able to build and create them in very different interesting ways. On the larger ships like the Brigantine and the Gallon, you'll be able to put watchtowers on the deck or build up higher walls to stop people from firing arrows onto your deck. You will be able to repair the boats if they sustain damage and each boat when they get to the larger stages will have stations that you can get other players to man or NPCs. That's why NPCs are going to be in the game. A request much asked for in Ark Survival Evolved, it's going to be a core component of Atlas. You'll gain these NPCs by rescuing them from ghostly galleons. These ghost ship armadas are basically your point of call for getting some NPCs. Once you have them, you have to make sure they're fed, you have to pay them with money otherwise they can mutiny. And they can do all sorts of things like follow you on adventures across islands as well as man all sorts of individual weapons and even possibly creatures. When you're on your boat you can instruct some of them to be lieutenants and they will give certain commands at certain times. So particularly if you're running a huge galleon and you're playing on your own, don't worry you have the opportunity to get one of them big ships. Ideally the game is a multiplayer focused game, however there is obviously ways that you can play it solo or at the very least in small teams. Adding to the customization is the fact that you can also build and change things down below on some of these bigger ships to however you want. You'll also be able to customize all sorts of things like the sails, the prow, the front ends with your own logos and your own banners that you upload. And just like Ark Survival Evolved, if you manage to get onto an enemy boat and destroy their beds, the enemies will no longer spawn on that boat. Each ship will have a logbook that gives you a history of exactly where it's been and what kind of trouble or adventures it's got up to. You will be able to steal other players boats. Remember this is a pirate game, everything can be stolen. You can take enemy creatures, you can take enemies boats, enemies houses, even their land. If you're successful on your adventures and you've got yourself some NPCs you can also level them up so they become better at what they do and you can build your own massive empire. You could have your own island, your own country. You could become the governor of a whole region. Build your own forts, plunder settlements. The choice is yours in terms of how you play this game. You've got to think massive. 
To help you with that, there is an abundance of creatures. So far from the trailer, I've noticed chicken, turkey, horse, peacocks, parrots, hydras, ogres, seabirds, hammerheads, elephants, giant whale, fiery demons, rock golems, orcs, generic small fish, lots of dolphins, swordfish and marlin, and kraken and dragons. There's also going to be mermaids and there's going to be 50 creatures at launch. And of course some of the big massive gods that you've seen from the trailer. Lots of these creatures will have practical uses like pulling carts or helping you with weapons. When you spawn into the world you'll be in a safe zone. They'll have a free port town so you can get used to the game. Before running around and doing the usual things that you've come to expect while playing Ark. Chopping trees, gathering resources. It will have thirst and it will have hunger. One of the more unique features about Atlas is the possibility that you will age. Your character does get old. Not only that, but you can breed. You can have little baby pirates that will grow up and you will pass on your character basically to your children. If that sounds mental, it is just a little bit. Along the way, expect to take part in bar brawls, hangings and all sorts of other pirating goodness. You may find that if you don't make it as a governor, you may be the person that's tilling the farms and putting your hard-earned money towards him. If you live on land that is owned by someone else, you will have to give them a small portion of any resources and treasure gathered there on your land. Whenever you do this, it will go directly to the owner of the land. The person who owns the land can set exactly how much tax is payable. So you may need to go out there and go and get your treasure and make a name for yourself just to keep the roof over your head. Or start yourself up a rebellion and take over the leader or governor of the lands. If rebellion is on the cards, you're going to need a bunch of weapons, including things like cannons, swivel guns, siege engines, turrets and even mortars. Lots of these will also come with different types of ammo, including grape shot, chain shot, spike shot, liquid fire and more. If you manage to get a foolhardy crew, you can instruct them to attack other ships and board and plunder. Also to help with that, there is progression system. There's going to be 15 disciplines with over 300 skills. It's a massive departure from what you're used to playing Ark Survival Evolved. There's also going to be a feat system to keep active and passive bindable character abilities. And there is a brand new stat buff system that gives you abstract statistics to be modified by skill, items and armour. Everything has scalable stats and everything including structures can be upgraded. Think of it as maybe doing something particularly a lot like running just like maybe in Skyrim and then you get some points to reward you as well as XP to put into certain attributes and skills. There's a huge amount of customization for your character. Permanent tattoos, you can draw war paint on top of that as well. And if you don't like the sound of getting old and losing your muscle tone, apparently there could be a fountain of youth to keep you young. Combat hasn't always been Ark's strongest point, but there is going to be melee systems with blocks, parries, dodges, as well as lots of motion and shields. There's gonna be different types of strikes. You're gonna be able to do strong strikes or stunning strikes. And maybe they're taking a leaf out of Conan Exiles book with the way that combat flows. Remember it's all first person though. In combat you're going to be using swords, maces, daggers, blackjacks. As well as lots of bows and buckshots and guns. Including flintlock pistols, muskets, blunderbusses and more. Adding to the customization is your ability to have your own parrot or monkey. These will give you little buffs very much like the pet system from Ark Aberration DLC. There's going to be a role for you whatever way you like to play. Maybe you're someone that sells food to weary pirates and sailors. You could become the best chef in the land when you make food that actually gives benefits in terms of vitamins that will help buff and boost players. Build your own shops with a brand new building system that works on the Ark old system but implements it far better with automatic elevation adjustment, dynamic tile type swapping and improved snap detection and previewing. There's also going to be plumbing in the system so you may need to make sure you flush your toilet and you can pixel paint absolutely everything in your home. So there we go, that is everything I know about Atlas from all the articles that released overnight as well as the Steam page and the forums. There is so much to comprehend in this game, it is definitely going to be a step up for most people that followed Ark. Bearing in mind 6 million people who own Ark play it on Xbox and PS4, the idea of playing a game on this scope and scale is maybe just a little bit much. And even for hardcore MMO fans, you'll be hard pressed to find many that have the promise of 40,000 players on just one server. 
Will it work? Who knows? Will we find out? Absolutely, I am going to cover this game. If it's good, I will carry on covering it. If I don't like it, I'm pretty much gonna sink it under the sea. I am Jay Plays Games. Make sure you liked up this video, and I'll see you at launch of Atlas and expect lots more content between now and then, giving you the heads up on whether or not this game's gonna be a success or whether or not it will sink swiftly under the ocean.